Okay, in this video, I'm going to be highlighting a very common algebra mistake. And actually, it's not so much a mistake as it is a uh, kind of an incorrect way to set up a problem, a problem like this in algebra. A lot of students don't set these problems up correctly. And of course, they'll make errors, which results in the wrong answer. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. We have xy minus yx. And we want to evaluate this expression for these values. x is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 3. OK, so if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to show you the best way to do a problem like this so you can avoid making this little error that I'm going to be talking about here in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Again, we want to evaluate this expression for these respective values. The correct answer is 0. OK, now if you didn't get this answer, I'm happy you made an error because you're going to see what you did wrong so you can avoid this mistake going forward. Now, if you got the correct answer, it could be that you got a little bit lucky. And I'm going to want to uh, kind of emphasize what I think is the best way to do a problem like this in algebra. And of course, I'm speaking from years and years, decades of experience and, uh, you know, um, basically grading maybe 10 million uh, homework quiz. Well, not that many, but you get the idea. I've seen a lot of math work over the years and I kind of see what habits uh you know, really reduce making an error versus, you know, those of you out there that might have gotten lucky. Nevertheless, if you got this correct answer, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus A 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that you are a certified professional algebra expert in the area of evaluating variable expressions. They'll have no idea what you just told them, but it just sounds pretty cool, so tell them anyways. All right, let's go ahead and get into this problem. So technically, or maybe I don't want to say technically, but you would see uh, this problem, the one I just uh, showed you, more formally written like this on a kind of a homework or a test. So the word is evaluate. OK, so we want to evaluate a variable expression, something like this, for respective values. So anytime you see this word in algebra, evaluate, what it's telling you is, hey, I'm going to give you some values for uh, particular variables. I want you to plug them in uh, re, uh, into these respective variables. And then you basically got yourself a nice uh, numeric expression. And you're going to apply the order of operations to simplify the problem. Now, most of you are saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're not telling me anything I don't already know. Well, Again, I don't think uh, the problem here for a lot of you is that you don't understand what this word evaluate means. It's really uh, the way you set up these problems. So let me go ahead and show you how a lot of you or many of uh, you know people do these type of problems. They'll say, OK, I understand what I need to do. I'm going to evaluate x, uh, y minus y, x. Now, remember in algebra, when you have two variables uh, next to one another like this, that means multiplication, right? So x, y minus y, x, uh, this is multiplication. So x is 2 and y is negative 3. So this is going to be uh, 2 times negative 3. So I'll write that like this. And then I have negative 3 times 2, right? So I have this minus sign right here. So that minus sign is kind of like in front of this 3. So this looks pretty good to me. So this is negative 3 minus 2 because I already have a negative sign right there. Now, this is a problem. Now, some of you might be saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I would never make this mistake. But listen, a lot of you out there would set this problem up this way, and you wouldn't understand it. You would say, I'm a little bit confused with this uh, minus sign or this subtraction uh, operator. And a lot of students will just kind of associate this negative sign. If they have negative 3, they'll just leave it like this. Okay, now... For you know, those of you that got this right, you're like, you know, ah, I would never make that error. But it does happen, and I'm going to show you a way 
you can prevent this. So let's suppose uh, somebody set this problem up this way, and now they're going to do what? Well, two times negative three, negative six, and then they're gonna go, oh, three times two, that's six, so I got negative six minus six, a positive six, and then they're going to do what? Negative six, and they'll go uh, plus negative six, so they'll end up with a negative 12. Now, if, you end, if your answer was negative 12, you made this classic error. You're not alone, so don't despair, okay? You should actually be very happy and be like, I am so happy I saw this video because I'll never make this mistake again. But I haven't uh, showed you how to prevent this error. Very, very common error. And evaluating expressions, variable expressions in algebra is super common. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the best way to do a problem like this. But before we look at this way, I want you to look at that subscribe button and smash that thing and hit that notification button. You have no idea of the positive impact this has on my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for a long time, many years. I'm just obsessed with um, teaching mathematics. So this is a great platform uh, for me. So if you're getting any value out of my content, and by the way, I teach from basic math to advanced math like calculus. So if you're studying any math within that range, you know, check out my hundreds and hundreds. Matter of fact, I think I have about 2,000 videos on my channel. So they're there for you to learn. My whole objective is to try to make learning math as easy as possible. If you want to check out my formal instruction, my best stuff, check out the links uh, uh, in the description. You'll see my most popular math courses. But back to the problem. Okay, so again, you know, in, in mathematics, what you need is... You know, um, you really want to learn from a teacher that has experience, okay, uh, like myself or somebody else, right? Because there's some of these little tiny things that we do in math, little habits or little kind of, um, uh, uh, I don't want to say hacks or tricks, but just kind of best practices to reduce making errors. So when it comes to evaluating a variable expression like this, and this is, again, a very, very common type of algebra problem. I want you to always uh, use parentheses. Always use parentheses when you're substituting, substituting in a numeric uh, value for um, a variable, okay? This will really help you reduce errors. So let's go ahead and actually see how this works. And again, you know, uh, this is a common type of thing you're gonna be doing in algebra. So if you, get, if you can understand this, you're going to really reduce uh, errors that uh, you could potentially make if you don't do this. All right, so xy minus yx, so x is 2, and y is negative 3. So I'm going to plug in for x and y, I'm going to be plugging these values in with parentheses. So parentheses 2, that's x, parentheses negative 3, minus, okay, so here's the minus or subtraction operator, parentheses, here's y right here by itself, negative 3. Okay, so y is negative 3. Again, I'm plugging in with parentheses, and then uh, x is 2. So the first thing you want to do, again, is to always use parentheses when you're plugging in values, when you're evaluating. Now, after you do this, do not just start kind of uh, simplifying uh, the remaining numeric expression. You want to double check. You want to say, okay, did I plug everything correctly? Double check and say, okay, all right, I did make any uh, corrections as needed. But if you're confident that you plugged in the respective numeric values for the variables, then you can kind of start simplifying this. So let's go ahead and remember order of operations. We have to do multiplication uh, before subtraction. So we're going to go from left to right. So two times negative three, negative six. And then here, right, we have negative three times two. That's negative six. Okay. And now we have subtraction right here. So now we have negative six plus now this right here, I can go plus at the opposite of a negative six. So a negative of a negative six or the opposite of a negative six is a positive six. So negative six plus six is zero. Okay. So let me just kind of do this one more time so you understand exactly how I got the answer. So the opposite or negative of a negative six is a positive six. Okay. So you need to, you know, be very, um, uh, you know, confident in seeing expressions like this, you're going to see a lot of this, like negative of negative one is a positive one. So the opposite or negative of negative six is positive six. So negative six plus six plus six, excuse me, is zero. Okay. So again, you know, I'm speaking from experience. I'm pretty sure I was making 
uh, this era way back in the good old 1980s and 70s. And, uh, you know, we had great math teachers back in those days. You know, there's great math teachers now. There's always been great teachers in every subject. But I think... Um, for me, uh, looking back and from, you know, especially from the 70s and 80s, we were just so much, you know, there, there was computers and there was calculators, of course, but we really uh, placed the emphasis on, you know, a lot of doing a lot of math, uh, less technology. I guess that's the what I'm trying to say. So, you you know, you, you practice doing a lot of math with just pencil and paper. And that's what you want to do, okay? If you truly want to learn mathematics and get great at it, yes, you, you, uh, you know, your calculator is a tool, but... You know, you're not going to get better at anything unless you practice, right? But it all starts with getting great instruction. And, you know, with an experienced math teacher, you can get little tips and tricks like this that can help you reduce errors. And that is kind of the name of the game in math. Okay, so if you need help with uh, anything algebra, matter of fact, I'm going to leave links to my most popular uh, math courses, which would include uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, pre-calculus, uh, and for uh, those of you that need a, a basic math refresher, check out my Math Foundations course. You'll find links to all those courses in the description below. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.